What's up guys? Welcome to another incredible Gamers Inquiry review. Today, I'm going to focus on the tank top wearing, green shorts rocking, dual pistol wielding Tomb Raider. Of course, I'm talking about none other than Lara Croft. For nearly three decades, Lara Croft and the Tomb Raider franchise has thrilled us with guns blazing, action adventure, gameplay, and impressive exploration. The most recent entry to the franchise, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is no exception. Not only is Shadow of the Tomb Raider the third and final game in the Tomb Raider origin trilogy, but it is also considered by most fans to be the best game in the franchise to date. Despite not having this busty, over-sexualized protagonist, Shadow of the Tomb Raider charmed critics and gamers alike with its dark storytelling flawless acting and high octane action. It's also won a slew of awards since its 2018 release. Is Shadow of the Tomb Raider worth playing in 2023? Find out here in today's review. All right, first up is story and narrative. Shadow of the Tomb Raider picks up about a year after the events of the previous game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. The story starts off in Mexico, where Lara pursues an evil paramilitary organization known as the Trinity to a temple containing the Dagger of Shock Shell. Like all good Tomb Raiders, Lara grabs the dagger despite being warned not to and by doing so inadvertently triggers the cleansing, which is basically the end of the world. Dominguez, or Amaru, as he is later revealed, captures Lara and takes the dagger away from her right before a tsunami destroys the island. Amaru's plan is to unite the dagger with a mystical box in the hidden city of Paititi, ending the cleansing and giving himself godlike powers. Lara and his trusted friend Jonah must now travel to Paititi, stop Amaru, and save the world from the apocalypse, which Lara herself pretty much started. The game's story is pretty cliche, especially for the genre it belongs to. The plot idea of the main character finding a MacGuffin to stop the end of the world is so generic, it sounds like something copied right off the back of an Indiana Jones Blu-ray DVD. Now the plot does succeed in telling a very emotional story that shows off Lara like we've never seen her before. Not only do we get to see Lara make mistakes and struggle with tough decisions, we also see her as more ruthless and lethal than in previous games. The days of Lara being a gun-toting sex symbol like Bayonetta are gone. This Lara is much more human, which I can definitely appreciate. To everything that my father went through, I gave Trinity exactly what they wanted. Next up is gameplay. Shadow of the Tomb Raider's gameplay is pretty much what you would expect from a Tomb Raider game. There's combat, stealth, story missions, side quests, platforming and lots and lots of puzzles. Seriously, there are puzzles for days. So much so that Eidos Montreal created a different version of side quests called Challenge Tombs, where you have to platform, traverse, intricate traps and water levels and solve puzzles to acquire different skill rewards. The problem is that some of these puzzles are so head scratchingly complex that even a super smart college professor would have difficulty solving them. That's assuming he doesn't fall to his death while trying to get there. However, if you are the kind of gamer that hates needlessly tricky puzzles, like me, don't rage quit just yet because the game allows you to adjust puzzle difficulty, and that's a fantastic addition from my perspective. In fact, the game has a custom difficulty setting that allows you to adjust elements of the game like combat, exploration, and puzzles. Just like the other games in the survival timeline, Shadow of the Tomb Raider boasts a robust skill tree. These skills are categorized into warrior, seeker, and scavenger skills. They basically give you an upper hand in puzzle solving, survival, exploration, combat, and so on. I wouldn't say they impact the game too much, but some skills can really come in handy, like the Serpent Strike skill, which allows you to perform a stealth kill takedown without alerting enemies. I almost forgot to mention that Shadow of the Tomb Raider also has a hub in the city of Paititi where you can interact with locals, buy firearms, and even gain quests. They, and many other elements like weapon upgrades, collectibles, and other fun activities place Shadow of the Tomb Raider's gameplay among the best I have experienced in a long, long time.
Okay, next is combat. Shadow of the Tomb Raider places heavy reliance on stealth. Gone are the days with Lara flipping and flopping in the air while unloading an infinite number of bullets on bats and dinosaurs. Now the game encourages you to slink through the dense jungle, hang from ledges, and take out the bad guys quietly. The game even pays homage to Rambo and Predator movies by having you camouflage with mud and then blend into the environment for cool stealth kills. The combat is grounded and yet very exciting. You can even disengage from combat just by hiding for a period of time. You also get to hunt wild animals, just like the other games in the trilogy. There's a part of the game where you get to fight with a jaguar, which was one of the coolest parts of the game in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the graphics and the resolution. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has some of the best graphics in modern gaming. Even though the game came out in 2018, I experienced the optimized upgrade for Xbox Series X and it still looks way better than some of the games coming out today. Also, the ray tracing feature of the game really brings the thick jungle, water, and other environments to life and don't even get me started on the lighting, which is absolutely beautiful. Simply put, the game's graphics are incredible and very immersive. It's one of the game's highlights and you should definitely check it out. Next is replayability. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a high level of replayability in my opinion. This was personally my fourth playthrough. Besides the story mission, the game has dozens of challenge tombs and caves to explore and side quests to embark on. Also, the game's customizable difficulty setting makes creating a unique experience with each playthrough easier. You can decide to play with easier puzzles and exploration mechanics enabled on your first playthrough and then crank up the difficulty of the puzzles with the next. This makes it easier for any kind of gamer to enjoy the game on multiple playthroughs. Finally, the game's developers, Eidos Montreal, have released a massive barrage of DLC content for the game. The definitive edition of the game features additional missions, clothing, weapons, and even more nerve-wracking challenge tombs. With all this additional content plus a solid base game to boot, I would say Shadow of the Tomb Raider is certainly a game that I look forward to playing over and over and over again. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a great third person action adventure game with very few flaws to speak of. The gameplay, graphics, and combat are top of the line. Though the game's story is certainly one we've heard before, perhaps in an Uncharted game or Indiana Jones movie, the game still does a great job of distinguishing itself from those popular titles by injecting raw emotions into its characters and delivering a realistic and immersive experience that's difficult to replicate. With all that being said, I'm pleased to review this game a 5 out of 5. It's truly a fitting end to a well-executed trilogy. Do you agree or disagree with my review? Let me know what you think in the comments. We produce awesome videos like this every week. So remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to get regular updates on new videos. Thanks again for watching, you guys. We will see you in the next one.